If you've been struggling to do well in your theory exams, then this video is for you. I'll give you all the tips that you need to be successful consistently anytime you sit for a theoretical exam or an essay exam. So you want to stick with me to the end of this video. Thank you. So the first thing you want to do is to understand the exam format. Now, understanding the exam format includes being aware of the number of questions, the time constraints, and the scoring criteria. Number of questions because this will help you plan your time well. The scoring criteria to know if there are some questions that carry more marks than others so you can give priority to those areas. And also the format in terms of is it the long essay type questions or the types where you have to make a list of things, illustrate and all of that. So it's very critical that you understand the format that the exam will take. Number two, you have to prioritize important topics and these you will get by reviewing past question papers and also paying attention while the lecturers are teaching in class as regards the areas that are in quote areas of concentration or the highlight areas such that once you've made a collection of everything from past questions let's say over the last five years or ten years for those who want to go the extra mile you make a list and you make sure that you know everything concerning these areas now i know people tend to believe you can't know everything that's partly true but there is a certain body of knowledge that you can have all the information concerning those areas and give everything in the exam so that you get the maximum score for that particular question so that's number two number three plan how you need to answer the questions now this is something i always did while in medical school from my second year up to my final year once i get the collection of questions that have been set in past questions prior to that time i sit down have a notebook might be a 40 leaves a 60 leaves whatever the case is but then i have an outline especially in the times when we used to answer questions that were largely long essay questions, have an outline, have a synopsis, a personalized synopsis. Yes, there's a general one, but you kind of enhance your own based on your research from other test book, papers online, websites online, whatever extra source you're getting your information from. So you plan how you would answer the question. So when you get in the all, you're basically just executing the plan that you've crafted and this will definitely make your theoretical exam stand out number four you have to practice active learning now active learning talks about recalling information from your memory and not just passive reading there's a video i made on active recall you can check it out it will pop up on the screen right now so you can do this either by setting questions for yourself and trying to recall everything you would write if it were an exam just offhand you don't have to make notes per se but just try and either vocalize them or you say it in your mind so that talks about active learning you can make use of sticky notes flashcards whatever the case is but as much as possible try to make sure you've done multiple recalls before actually sitting for the exam number five use mnemonics and memory aids now for very difficult concepts or for concepts that are associated with long list of items or things that are difficult to remember simply put you have to use mnemonics and memory aids so that you don't lose track of your thought process you don't skip things when you're writing in the exam or this would significantly help you memory aids like association very key it was instrumental for me while i was in school so you can associate facts that you're learning with something that you're used to it could be someone's birthday it could be someone's age whatever the case is as you practice it you're going to get better at the skill of association so make sure you employ memory aids and mnemonics when you're reading in preparation for theoretical exams number six self quiz and review now this is also in keeping with the principle of active learning so from time to time you review those areas that you feel you're good at based on how well you know that particular area so the, the ones that you feel maybe you usually find difficult you review them more frequently and the areas that you find less difficult the interval between reviews can be longer you can also create time to do this in your group study you teach someone the areas that are seemingly difficult for you and this will help keep the information you have somewhere up there and not down the line now, when you're answering the questions in the exam, or you want to do something, you want to start with the one you know best. Now, when I do tutorials for students, I usually mark the scripts, and there's something about the first impression that you as a tutor get from a particular script. There's usually no instruction as regards the particular question that must be answered first. You might just say answer five out of six, answer eight out of 10, whatever the case is, but start from the one you know best. 
this would give the person marking a very good impression about your work and it can now give the person psychological allowances when there are areas of deficiency like perhaps this student was running out of time perhaps one or two issues arose but that first question gives a very good impression so don't start with something you have little or no idea about next is read the instructions thoroughly oftentimes students tend to just dash into writing without paying attention to the instructions you might need to understand how you are expected to structure your answers sometimes there are specific instructions for specific questions sometimes there are do not for specific questions and if you violate those instructions you might be penalized so don't just go with the excitement of i have so much knowledge about this and delve into it the lecturer sometimes might specify do not add this do not do this or this is what i expect from you so make sure you read your instructions before you start writing your series school exams next manage your time wisely always go into the exam with a wristwatch this is non-negotiable it's usually appalling sometimes when students say time caught up with me i wasn't keeping track of time if you have six questions for a three hours exam wisdom tells you that you should spend about 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes on each question so that you have about five to ten minutes to come and do like a general review and make corrections where necessary to so manage your time wisely you know work feels work expands to fill the space we create for it that's the pythagoras rule right so make sure that you go in with a watch when you're going for the exam and you keep track of the time you're spending on each question utilize visual aids it's always very interesting when you see students get creative with flow charts diagrams and all of that because it just communicates what you could have written with paragraphs and long notes it's still fine if you do that i was of the opinion in school that despite the fact i may write detailed notes paragraphs and, and all of that i will still add the flow chart the diagrams because once the lecturer sees it it tells the entire story it's also a plus when they get to read your work and it looks like everything is coming together and communicating the same idea and sometimes you might even get extra marks if it's there in the marking scheme that such things should carry maybe two four marks whatever the case is so make sure you utilize visual aids when you're writing your theoretical exams now quantity and quality count quantity talks about the volume of information you write based on the amount of knowledge you have why quality talks about two things how correct your information is relative to the standard and how presentable your work is so all of this must be factored in every time you write a theoretical exam you want to write much and you also want to write something that is largely very correct and present it well someone who does this would definitely score higher than someone who writes very little for something that you are told to explain or discuss or elaborate and also definitely he will score better than someone whose answers were partially correct or frankly incorrect so you want to make sure that your work is on point with respect to quantity and with respect to quality you have to stay calm and focused especially when you're giving questions that seems to want to rattle you maybe you don't have so much idea about it but you have to remain calm and focused this will enable you plan a way as regards answering that question so take for instance you're giving a question that you have little idea about you have to blow that idea up and largely in schools there are usually patterns to approach questions so once you have a pattern for a question it's just to fit the information that you have as much as possible into that pattern and if there are general things that would apply for some of those headings or synopsis as we like to call it or patterns sometimes you can just safely go with the general but do not leave your script blank assuming you do not know anything make sure you write we used to call this merger then back in school but the idea was create something out of little or create something out of almost nothing so stay focused remain calm if you see questions that rattle you and just develop your idea as much as you can stay healthy you have to prioritize your physical health and your mental health before the exam so this would entail you getting as much sleep as you know you need depending on your body adjustment or your body type if you know you're fine with three four five six seven hours of sleep whatever the case is get that required amount of sleep before the exam and also eat well 
eat well some of you like to say you do well in the exams without eating I, I find that hard difficult to believe because hypoglycemia is a known cause of forgetfulness i can tell you from experience and from scientific research so please as much as you can eat before going to the hall unless you have gi troubles and all of that if you eat in the morning quite all right but take something sugary preferably when you're in the hall so stay healthy mentally stay sharp stay alert so that you don't come out of the hall and the information you've forgotten all starts coming to you when you're out of the hall i speak from experience so you have to watch out for your health mentally and physically Proofread your answers, please. Before submitting, make sure you go through your answers. So air is human, they say. So when you write, there is tendency for errors to occur when you write the first time. This is the essence of you leaving 5 to 10 minutes allowance for each question. So you can come back, swiftly, swiftly read through, make corrections where necessary, make adjustments where necessary, and you're delivering a perfect work. A little living, living them the whole lump. Sometimes there are costly mistakes you make that might make the examiner just get frankly annoyed or disappointed or a bias sort of sets in from that point so you want the person to enjoy your work and have as much as possible a good perspective of whoever that student is while they are marking it's essential that you proofread your work before you submit there is no competition for those of you who like to be the first to submit there is no competition there is no benefit for whoever first submits his or her work in the exam. So calm down, proofread your work, make sure it's correct as much as possible, the quality is okay, and then you're largely good to submit. Lastly, learn from your previous experiences. You would write a couple of theoretical exams in school, and it's important that you take cues as to the areas you had challenges when you wrote those exams. It's essential, it's vital. Now, what you would also do would be when next you're going for subsequent exams you want to outline those areas and make sure that you've worked on them so if for instance you write slowly if you tend to have disorganized have issues with being organized when you write you have to put all of these things into consideration and decide okay this is how i'm going to navigate this challenge this is how i'm going to overcome this challenge and these are the things you want to do if you want to score high in your theoretical exams consistently. If you have questions, please leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, share with your friends, your colleagues, and of course, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. I'll be seeing you next time. I remain Dr. Gospel, the Medic Coach, and thank you for joining me today.